morning guys I have you propped up on my dashboard so I apologize for the angle but I'm driving to work and I thought we'd do a little chit chat uh, it is Tuesday morning the day after Memorial Day thank you all for sharing our Memorial Day with us we had the best time and uh, a lot of you liked the video that I put up yesterday so um, today's talk is about weight loss the big W. <laughs> I love talking about it. Over the years, I have evolved and have done pretty much every weight loss program out there, I would probably say. Um, weight Watchers, I've done Atkins, Keto, Carnivore. I've done um, a lot of pills back in the day. I did Stacker too. I did ephedrine, I did like everything. And you know, like looking back now, I could see why I had a lot of struggling over the last few years because I, I had completely destroyed uh, my body. And I won't even say metabolism anymore. And by the way, I forgot my rings. I'm so, I feel so lost now. But um, anyway, I just feel like I don't want to label it that anymore, that I destroyed my metabolism. What I did was become a chronic dieter. That is why I struggled. Not so much anymore, but that is why I struggled. And looking back now, being so successful on this GLP-1, I see that having two hormones that play a crucial role in weight loss, the GLP and the GLP-1 hormones, being deficient in them is the root cause. So it's not that I destroyed my own metabolism, but I was actually deficient in the hormones. Who knew? So if you're someone who struggled for years to lose weight, and you have your thyroid checked and you have, you know, all the things done correctly and you're still struggling, it might just be the hormonal piece. In fact, I would probably say it would be because until I went on this medication and really saw what kind of effect I would have on it, where you don't hear the food noise, where you're not hungry all the time, where you're not thinking about what's in your refrigerator, what's in your pantry. You really see that having those hormones necessary, and when they're not there, you really see what it can do to you. And for many years, I struggled with I have no willpower, I have willpower sometimes, I have commitment, other times I don't have commitment. And it, again, wasn't me, like my logical thinking, it was my hormones. That is huge, that is huge. I wish I would have known about it many years ago, but obviously we didn't know. Uh, there were a lot of doctors coming out now who are saying that you know, while people out in the world, and I was one of them. Let me let me step back a minute. I, before this, was like, I will never go on this medicine. I think it's ridiculous. Another fad, whatever. It's truly a medication that will give you freedom from the chains that have bound you for years. But the, the medicine is not magical in that it doesn't cause you to lose weight. You have to show up every day. You have to eat the right food. You have to exercise. You have to do all the right things. But the bottom line is when you're trying to lose weight, you have to be, have to be in a caloric deficit. You have to be. And a lot of the diets that I mentioned earlier had calorie ranges that were way too low, like below a thousand calories a day. And your body doesn't like that because it feels like it's starving. And 
it will hold on to everything that you put in your mouth. That's why, you know, I stayed away from fruit for so long, a couple of years, because it was a carbohydrate, because it had natural sugar in it. And we know sugar is not great. But if it's natural sugar, even though the body can't decipher sugar, whether it's natural or from a cookie jar, the natural sugars almost always have fiber attached. So your body doesn't mind it as much. Your glucose spike isn't as rapid as if you were to eat a cookie versus an orange, even though an orange is very fast acting. Uh, gluco, you know, elevation, but it also has fiber. So you got to look at that. But, you know, fear of food, being afraid to eat a banana, being afraid to eat too much broccoli, that is so mental. And I lived that life for many years. And it was only until now that I really realized now, another thing going back to the medication, I see it a lot. I, I am always online looking. People are bashing the medication, saying people are taking the quick way out and yada, yada, yada. I feel like everybody has a reason as to why they want to go on it. We're not allowed or we shouldn't judge others. You know, sometimes people don't express the full gamut of why they're doing it. Maybe they're like, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay. But maybe they have reason behind it other than, you know, just a quick fix. And it's not a quick fix. It's just, it makes the hormones that you would naturally have in your body and that we naturally produce exist. So we, you know, like someone who has no weight issues and that are naturally fit and whatnot, they will tell you that they can look at a piece of cake, let's say, and just walk by and they're like, eh, I don't want it. That's because their satiety is there and that is because they have the hormones that would normally do that to you. When you're deficient, like I was, or am, that's why I'm on the medicine, we don't have that regulation. So it's very hard to turn down a cookie, a piece of cake, you know, you've eaten already and then you're at work and they bring out a birthday cake and you really don't want the cake, but you, you feel compelled to have it because it's someone's birthday and you don't want to offend somebody. And then you eat it and then what happens? Then you go back later that night and now you've already eaten something junky and then you want something else and whatever. It's just such a head game. But the medication is not a quick fix. It doesn't magically make you lose weight. It's just, it helps you stay in a caloric deficit because that is our natural. Like if you think back to a video of mine from a few years ago when I was talking about wild animals, a wild animal will kill something and eat it and they may not eat again for a day or two, maybe longer. And their satiety is there until they're hungry again, but they don't overeat. Like an animal will only eat until it's full and then they'll walk away from it. They don't say to themselves, oh my God, I might not eat for three days. I better eat this entire kill. And they don't walk away with an overstuffed stomach ready to be sick. They don't do that. Babies don't do that. You ever notice a baby, when they're not hungry, they turn their head. They don't want it. They don't want it. So, why do we, right? So, again, another reason to go get your blood work done. Go to your doctor. If you're struggling with losing weight, talk to your doctor about perhaps having those two hormones deficient or not even there at all. Menopause is... You know, it could be a pleasant experience. I mean, it should be. It's your body's way of, you know, evolving and becoming non childbearing anymore. And it's a beautiful stage of life, but it can be very hard to go through because your hormones are all over the place. And if you're already deficient in those hormones, then menopause might not be so pleasant. <laughs>
<laughs> that for me it was not but you know it wasn't horrible it was just that I gained some weight I gained uh, a lot of inflammation I couldn't sleep I had a lot of um, hot flashes brain fog just tired and you know all those things and now like I just feel like my old self again and I feel like there's really nothing wrong with wanting to be your old self or a better version of yourself. And it pains me to hear people really, really bashing the medication because let's just say you were deficient in regulating uh, your blood pressure. And the doctor said, you know what? It's time we put you on blood pressure medication. Nobody in the world is going to be like, you shouldn't be on that. What a quick fix that was. Look at that. Your blood pressure is great. What a quick fix. You still have to do the work when you're on blood pressure meds, right? You stay away from the salt. You eat better. You start exercising. So medication is there for a reason, but the person still has to do the work. If you're on a blood pressure med and you're still eating all kinds of shit and your salt is very high and you're not exercising and you're doing nothing right, the medication won't magically work. It just won't. It may work a little, but not, not the way you would want it to. So, I don't know. It just got me thinking a lot because I've been seeing so many people, and I was one of them. I didn't go as far as some of these people do, but wow. And I also think some celebrities have really um, shined with it. Like if you look at Kelly Clarkson, who struggled with her weight for, she says her whole life, she used the medication and she looks fabulous. And more importantly, she feels good. Right? But then you look at, you know, others who just took it way too far. Now, Sharon Osbourne, she has said many times that she was always a weight struggler herself. And then she went on the medication and she says now that she can't gain weight at all. And she's really struggling. So, you know, it can go a little too far, perhaps, but that's why it's very important that you are monitored by your doctor. You know, I go through a company online and I use their doctors for like the little intermittent conversations that I may want to have. But at the core of this is my primary doctor. And I talk to him monthly and I go to my visits, we do my labs, we check everything and you know, that's the core foundation. There's a lot of people that are just omitting that. And there's a lot of pop-up companies now that will take you without a prescription, without blood work. I mean, I don't go there. I think that's dangerous, to be honest. I think you should always be monitored, followed by your doctor, someone who knows you, who knows your history, who can look back at labs and see if there's any changes. All those things. I don't think that you should do it without it, to be honest. And these telehealth doctors from these companies, they're great when you're asking questions and whatnot, but they they don't follow you. Uh, the, somebody messaged me the other day asking about the company that I use, um, if, I need, if they needed a prescription and whatnot, and I said, yes, you do. And you also have to upload to that um, portal your blood work and they ask for blood work periodically which is very good I think um, but again there's a lot of companies that don't do that so um, if you're looking to do this go to your regular doctor first get your blood tested and talk about the symptoms and the things that you're experiencing that would make you want to do this because I know a lot of people that have done it, they've lost their weight and they go off it and they gain their weight back because they're likely missing the hormone. Some people that I know, a, a girl that works for me, um, she lost a lot of weight and she only takes a small amount like once a month now, one, one injection. And, but she's so much younger than me. So it's like, you have to look at a lot of things. There's factors, everybody's different. So, um, 
everybody's different. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Weight loss is not equal across the board. It's individualized. So do what works for you. What I have noticed also is since I'm back in the gym and I'm exploring Pilates and all the different things, the exercise piece is so important. Your body has to move and there are times that I get out of work and I'm like, I do not want to go exercise. But I do it because when I'm there and when I leave, I feel amazing. And you, our bodies are meant to move. Like if you go back thousands of years, people didn't sit in their cave watching YouTube. They were out climbing, hunting, walking through the woods, doing the things, making tools, raising families. There weren't cars, there weren't computers, you know? And when I was growing up, we played outside, right? We played outside, we rode our bikes, we rode our big wheels, we went on pogo sticks, we went to the pool, we went to the park, we played tennis, we played basketball, dodgeball, kickball. Like, most kids in, in my era, like the 70s, we were very active. Like, on the weekend, we didn't sleep in until 11 o'clock, have breakfast, scrolling through TikTok. Nobody, you know, that's, uh The only activity kids get these days is their thumb scrolling. Now, that's obviously a stretch. But what I'm saying is, you got to be active. Our bodies are meant to be active. You don't want to get older and not be able to get out of a chair. You won't, you won't want to not be able to do steps. You want to grow old gracefully at home and be healthy doing it. But unfortunately, a lot of people are not growing older gracefully. So I want to be somebody who does and for as long as I can, you know, I want to be able to go to the park with my grandkids and swing on the swings with them, go on the seesaw. Do they even have seesaws anymore? I don't think they do. But, you know, go to Disney World and walk through the park and not need a wheelchair. I don't want to be one of those grandmas. I don't. I don't. Or I don't want to be one of those wives. My husband's very active. So am I. We stay that way because we want to enjoy retirement in a couple of years. We want to travel. We want to do things. And what better way to do it than going through menopause, deciding I need to do something, doing it, and then focusing on it, committing to it, and living a life of abundance. That's how I feel. I was actually thinking of interviewing my primary doctor, if he would do it, uh, sitting down with him at the doctor's office and actually talking to him about it and filming it. So maybe if you have a specific question that you would like my doctor to answer, this may be fun, leave that in the comment section um, and start the comment with the letter MD so I can pull those out pretty quickly. Um, and then I'll see if I can arrange that. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day. Mwah! I love you. Bye.